So for this example, we're going to move on from just proving triangles to congru congruent to showing that because triangles are congruent, that means other things about our picture. And we're going to use CPCTC, which means uh, corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent to help us to prove some things. So when you look at this problem, the goal is to show that AC bisects BAD, which essentially is showing that BAC is congruent to CAD. That's our goal. If we can show that, then we've got the proof. But that isn't straightforward to show unless you can show that those two triangles are congruent. So really what we want to do is show that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle ADC. Then by CPCTC, we can show that angle BAC is congruent to angle CAD, which would then prove what we want. So we start by just making the claim. Now, what they give you is they give you AC is a perpendicular bisector of BD. Um, and this is, gives you a lot of information. It first tells you that AC is a bisector of BD. And if AC is a bisector of BD, that means BC is congruent to CD. Because that means that C is the midpoint. And so that's just definition of segment bisector. Anytime you're given anything about a bisector, you should know that means there are two parts that are congruent. Segment bisector gives you two congruent uh, segments. Angle bisector gives you two congruent ang angles. Then it tells you it's a perpendicular bisector. So not only is C the midpoint, but at angle at point C, you've got two right angles. And so we can claim that angle ACB and angle ACD are right angles. And because th those are right angles just by definition of perpendicular lines. That's what it means to be perpendicular is to meet two segments that meet at right angles. So now we've shown, um, we can then show that those are congruent. So we've shown that angle ACB is congruent to angle ACD. So if we're trying to show that this triangle is congruent to that triangle, we've almost gotten there. We've got a side and we have an angle. So we either need another angle or we need another side. Well, there does turn out to be a very easy side to get and never forget to look for these. Um, and that is that side AC is congruent to side AC. They share a side, so those sides have to be congruent. And that is just because um, of the reflexive property of congruence. And I see I left out a reason here for four. The reason we knew those are congruent to each other is because right angles are congruent. That's a theorem that you should have proven that if you got two right angles and they have to be congruent because their measures are the same. Now, once we put that in there, now we can use side angle side to show that triangle ACB is congruent to triangle ACD. Always be careful because there's our, there's our other side. Always be careful to put the points in the right order. Notice that AC is in the same place as both of those. Um, and then B and D are corresponding as well. Now, the reason that's good is because we can then claim that angle BAC is congruent to angle CAD. So BAC is congruent to angle CAD, and that's because of our very powerful and useful theorem that says... CPCTC, corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. And if we've shown that those two angles are congruent, by definition, we can say then that AC bisects angle BAD, and that is just because of the definition of angle bisector. And so our two angles are congruent. So this is a really good example of needing to use CPCTC to be able to prove an interesting, the uh, an interesting concept, which is that AC is an angle bisector of BAD. There are other things that you could have proven. For instance, you could have shown that AB is congruent to AD, which would show that ABD is an isosceles triangle, or angle B is congruent to angle D for the same reason. But whatever case, this was a good way to show that AC is the bisector of angle B, A, 